This is Dr. Alvis at the Montgomery College uh, ELAP program. I'm going to present information about uh, some basics of verb tense usage in academic writing. These are some uh, details that can help you uh, figure out how to produce uh, uh, clearer ideas with more accurate grammar when you are writing for college and, and afterwards. Uh, first, uh, now English has 12 verb tenses. You can see them in the table here. These uh, simple, perfect, progressive, and perfect progressive tenses with past, present, and future. And uh, I'm sure you've spent time learning all of these, but you've realized that not all of them are very common. You know, for the future perfect progressive, not very, very common verb. These, uh, and so really what's essential in academic writing are the simple tenses, the simple present, simple past, simple future, and uh, the present perfect also is statistically very common. And so being able to focus on these verb tenses can help you produce more accurate writing rather than worrying about this full range of verb tenses. Some of these other ones are important, of course, but statistically, this is what you must learn to control with accuracy. And the good thing is these are simple tenses. Uh, they don't have complex verb forms. So let's consider some of the functions of these uh, common four verb tenses. So the simple verb, uh, simple present tense there is a basic way to state facts that are true in general. I'm sure you know this, not only in the present. So it doesn't mean that they are happening now. It could be in the past, present, or future in terms of the idea. So smoking increases rates of lung cancer. That was true in the past, present, or future, right? So this is just factual information. And we use the simple present tense for that. A great deal of academic writing includes that. Uh, now, if you use the simple past tense, it's because they are specific times in the past. And the word specific <clears throat> usually means there's some kind of date or time, something that is specific. So, for example, between 1970 and 2010, the rate of smoking in the U.S. fell from about 37 to 19 percent. So we have that specific phrase at the beginning to tell us, and you think it's 40 years, it's not specific, but no, that's a specific period of time. Now let's contrast that with the present perfect tense, which refers to events at non-specific times or something that began in the past and continues to the present. Um, uh, this tense is it's commonly used for background information, something that has happened in the past, but not a specific time. So. Uh, the rates of smoking have uh, in the U.S. Uh, have decreased. Okay. Notice there are there is no time word or phrase here. It, it's not needed, and uh, uh, it's not. Although it began in the past, uh, it sort of may may be continuing to the to the present. Uh, this is a little more complicated than the simple past, uh, and especially because we don't use time words with these. The simple future tense uh, is easier, uh, used to make predictions, and there'll be more examples below, but keep in mind uh, they can be less certain, may, might, could, uh, versus will, which is uh, high or complete certainty, and uh, this is also important. So these basic verb tenses here is, constitutes a very high percentage of what you need to control in your writing. Notice none of these are progressive tenses. All right, so uh, let's look at some common mistakes. Uh, here's some common mistakes uh, you might have made in your writing. Uh, using the progressive tense too often when it is not needed or not logical. So take a look at this sample. Uh, according to the CDC, that's the Centers for Disease Control, less than 14% of Americans are smoking. Now that's very strange. Does that mean that they are in the process of smoking right now at this very moment? Uh, this is a factual statement. We need to use that uh, simple uh, present tense. All right. So watch out for this. And it's very common to use it when we're speaking. In fact, I'm speaking about it now, right? So uh, in speech, we often use the progressive, but in factual statements in academic writing, the simple, uh, simple present tense is sufficient. Okay, and another common mistake is confusing the simple past and the present perfect. They are similar. They are both happened or at least started in the past, 
1970, about 37% of Americans have been smokers. Well, that's not logical. Okay, 1970 is only in the past. That's it. It is not related to the present, or it's not connected to the present. So uh, it needs to be simply were. And this is very common. I've seen this many times since in student writing, confusion of these two. Another common error is overusing the past perfect. So in, in 1970, about 37% of Americans had been smokers, and it's in the past. But uh, when you use had been, that means it was before 1970, but clearly it is in 1970. So had been is not acceptable. It still were. All right. So these are two common mistakes. Uh, which have you made? Confusing predictions uh, with hypothetical statements. Now, prediction uh, is uh, basically something associated with the future tense, right? And a hypothetical uh, is something that's more associated with the uh, use of would. It's hypothetical, imagined, unreal. Uh, some medical researchers predict that smoking would decrease in the future due to several factors, and that's that's strange because it's a uh, would indicates an unreal situation. This is a prediction. All right, will and well, let's add that little hedging word probably. I'll mention what the hedging word is a little bit later. All right, so watch out. Separate would and will. It's not that hard, but it sometimes happens because in spoken English we use would in in a variety of ways that we don't use uh, when we're when we're writing. All right, on the progressive, uh, a note. Progressive tenses need only be used when an action is truly in progress. Okay, so uh, today schools are providing students with knowledge about the risks of smoking and vaping, and it's it's okay. That's fine. It it this person wants to emphasize this the writer wants to emphasize that it's in progress since the 1970s the US rate of smoking has been falling rapidly uh, those are both fine nevertheless both of these sentences would still be logical and accurate in the simple tenses so uh, provide and uh, has fallen all right so this is uh, you know do you need it do you need uh, to use the progressive. It's it's only for certain circumstances, certain emphasis. Uh, the past perfect is a difficult tense to master. It is uh, used less frequently than the other four tenses, but there are some important functions, uh, and these include uh, you, uh, describing past events before other past events. That's what the function is of it, basically. By 1990, uh, the uh, rate smoking rate in the U.S. had fallen to 25 percent. That little word by tells us it's before 1990. So 1990 is in the past. Uh, the falling had fallen happened before 1990. Another common technique, a common reason for using it is reporting information in which the person speaks in the past and talked about something which happened before the speaking. So first, uh, we have the decrease, uh, uh, the decrease there. It had decreased, uh, and that was before the claim. So the claim was in the past, and this is in the past. The original statement would have been uh, smoking rates uh, maybe have decreased, and it becomes had decreased in the reported information, reported speech. Uh, third is past unreal hypothetical statements. Uh, and that's uh, things like would, could, might. Uh, these are tough. Uh, if more information about the risks of smoking had been made, uh, the, uh, the rates in the past might have been much lower. These are not too common, but these can be used in, uh, in a, uh, what we call uh, case studies and discussing uh, or writing about a situation that happened in the past and imagining what might have happened if something else had been the case. Uh, tough, but that what's ha that's what happens. Uh, the future is generally simple, uh, and uh, and uh, in addition to will, uh, we can use may, might, could uh, for these. And so, uh, in this case, e-cigarettes and vaping devices may increase the rates of nicotine consumption. And so, will is a strong prediction, but uh, we have to. Uh, uh, be tentative and uh, hedge a little bit. Now we have to separate those from hypothetical statements 
with instead of will, may, could, might, that would, could, might use to express uh, hypothetical ideas. And let's look at a, a couple of examples. You might just be discussing imagined situations, whether they are past, present, or future. Uh, if smoking were harmless, more people might smoke. Notice how we use that past tense verb there, uh, and wa were instead of was for formal writing. Uh, here's a past situation, had not done. Here's that past perfect we need here. If uh, medical scientists had not done sufficient research, we would be less clear about the effects of smoking. And this sentence contains both past and present hypothetical situations. This is past, this is present, uh, but uh, we, they're both in the past tense to indicate it is hypothetical. And we sometimes provide hypothetical examples here. For example, if prices of tobacco were raised by 10%, the uh, rates of smoking would, and let's add a little hedging word, likely decrease by 3 to 4 percent. Okay, so we're using that and adding that little hedging word. And we sometimes ask rhetorical questions. What would happen if smaller numbers of Americans smoked? All right, uh, there's a quick note here about using the uh, past or past perfect tense with the in the if clause, but the modals uh, uh, would, could, or might uh, occurs in the main clause, all right? And uh, let's look at that hedging there. Hedging words are words that reduce the degree of certainty because reality in the world, uh, things are not always certain. And we cannot always say all people, but rather many or some people. We can't say they always or never do it, but rather frequently or rarely. This is academic expression, and you do need to learn to use this kind of language for certain kinds of statements. So instead of Americans do not smoke, uh, Americans tend not to smoke, or Americans rarely smoke. So when you're thinking about verb tenses, don't forget to consider these hedging terms. Uh, instead of smoking rates in the U.S. will fall in the future, it's impossible to predict that, uh, will probably fall in the future. We can guess, and using that word probably means I am making a guess, or I might use the word may or are likely to. These are all useful hedging words. Okay. Um, okay, finally, it is impossible to remember all of these details, but try to keep these ideas uh, in mind. Okay. Uh, focus on the simple verb tenses. Okay, the simple past, present, and future. Uh, present and past especially, uh, those are the they're very, very frequent uh, verb tenses you need to, and it makes life easier when you focus on these and, and don't get confused by the perfect and progressive tenses that, was make, that makes confusion. Okay, Consider the functions of these tenses, and th this list here, are you stating facts? Simple present. Are you describing history? Simple past. Are you giving background information? Present perfect tense. Are you making predictions? Simple future. Are you stating hypothetical situations? Use would, could, might in the past tense. This right here, if you can get that information and under control, you've got about 90% of, of what you need in your college writing. Uh, don't forget that hedging language. Okay, There are various places to look for these things. And uh, notice verb tenses when you read academic texts and imitate that style. Oh, finally, I will mention the developing details card uh, has a number of sections on verb tenses and verb forms, sections two on verb tenses, also uh, five on passive voice, and seven on uh, conditionals. Uh, in the uh, writing with clarity and accuracy card, uh, uh, section five, section five has uh, issues on uh, factual statements, uh, predictions and hypothetical statements, and uh, when you uh, when you use those resources, uh, they are going to be focused on the kind of language you need for academic writing. So uh, these are some ideas you might want to look back through this and uh, get uh, get this information so that you can improve your your writing. Make it simple. Get these basic things under control in your writing. Good luck.